Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Just wanted to uh, do a daily update because a lot of it is research for my book and a lot of it is reinforcing what I have learned and connected the dots. And so I want to become part of my body, mind, and spirit. So that way, I am more effective in writing out my information. And so, yeah, I delete people off my Facebook who want to dispute my information. And when I have a video that says stay home and stay safe and I explain why, obviously, if people have to work and they have things they have to do because of necessities, then you do what you got to do and you learn how to play the game. Okay, but um, anyone that says, oh, staying home is not good for your mental health. First of all, that person isn't doing the J-Juice or have done the J-Juice mentality, and she's a major activist, so I had no problem just taking away from my Facebook because she offers nothing to me and I offer nothing to her, and so there is no uh, mutual beneficial relationship, even through a Facebook type of friend. So I have no problem cutting people off that I feel like there is nothing there. And so, yeah, you give me a reason to, I will. I'll cut you off that quick. I have no problem with that. So she's gone. So anyways, not that you probably saw it, but that's okay. But I wanted to, uh, just let you know that yes, a good, like a clear gut equals good mental health. I mean, it is a balanced mental health. A balanced gut is good mental health. So anyways, I was, uh, that last night, I was looking, or this morning, I was looking for some videos, and I came upon the whole Michael Moore. Michael Moore is a major, major left-wing left, left wing liberal, and he's a filmmaker, and he has some interesting videos. I watched them when I was at City College of San Francisco. My professor showed us a few movies. I think one was um, uh, Bowling for Columbine. And that was like the whole thing against guns and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was introduced to a very left, left wing, um, obviously in my childhood, but also in college, in the city college, San Francisco. So Michael Moore did this movie called Fahrenheit 9-11. And I, re I sort of remember stuff way back in 2000 when, uh, when I came back from Mississippi and that was right when the new elections and Bush came into office and everyone was freaking out and then the whole thing with the hanging chads and all that, which was the whole Florida, everything was contingent upon Florida to actually, to, to, um, determine the outcome. And then the whole hanging chads thing then just said that, okay, G George Bush got it. And then all the Democrats were out in the streets just protesting and Gore said, oh my God, the election was taken away from me. And Everyone was in an uproar, and then 9-11 happened, okay? And it showed in that movie, Fahrenheit 9-11, all the, the events from the liberal perspective of Gore getting his election taken away all the way up to then 9-11. And, of course, Michael Moore has his uh, perspective on what the Bush's, Bush administration did as, you know, you know, in reaction to 9-11 and all the things that led up to that. And that's like, you know, like all politics. But it gave me <laughs> like, oh, my God, this is the same thing with the thing with Trump. Oh, my God, this is the same thing. And then all the stuff in the media, it's all filler stuff. So in between disasters and health issues and the whole, you know, the virus stuff and the hospitals filling up and people quitting and the, and the vector debates and you have the hurricanes and all that other stuff. <laughs> then you have uh, the, the election stuff. So. I see, you know, what's going on. History is repeating itself. I mean, it's not a coincidence that it was 20 years ago that we started in with this whole 9-11 era and then all the conspiracy theories and all the other stuff and all the election stuff. And then and then uh, we pull out of Afghanistan and things are ramping up even more. And so I'm just like, OK, I get it. You know, um, George Bush's presidency was protested by Democrats who thought the election was taken from them. And, and then 9-11, 2001 happened. So 20 years later, same scenario, different party, more activity, Trump based acting like Gore base. Polls have flipped. And um, and then there's that movie Fahrenheit 9-11 um, and then around 46 minutes because he's doing a question and answer and an encore of that movie um, in the for the anniversary of 20 years uh, in that actual uh, 
video that I posted, that YouTube video. So it, it, it's like 46 minutes before you actually get to that portion of where I, uh, everyone was protesting against George Bush and Al Gore thought everything was taken away. So yeah, y'all are being played. I mean, that's obvious, but whatever. And so, um, and then I was thinking about, oh my God, that's right. And um, I, I was thinking about the whole thing with the sulfur. See, my, uh, why I get where I get my ideas from is because of what I experience. And so lately I've been smelling sulfur, okay? And I've been tasting onions. So onion, sulfur, same thing. You hear about it from other people and from the media that people are experiencing sulfur tasting, sulfur smells. There's an actual scientific uh, explanation, which is just applying a narrative to an action or an energy. And they're calling it phantasm, phantasming smell and has to do with molecules in your body producing this. But let me give you the real lowdown, though, because they're not going to tell you about viruses and viral energy and thermodynamics, because that goes over the head of most people, considering most people have an eighth grade education and an eighth grade um, reading comprehension level. So they have to really find ways to kind of dress up the energy behind what's going on. But that sulfur smell is no different than Dante's Inferno. Okay, you know what hell is? Hell is in your bowels. It's like the nine circles of hell. It's the, it's the six sphincter muscles in your bowels. And the sulfur smell is when the body goes through activity from viral transducers because they're electric. And when your sugar drops because a virus goes through your body and does whatever it does, it upgrades, you need to feed your body more food, right? And sugar, it codes your DNA. That's why people who say that they're against sugar are completely asinine because you need sugar. It, it codes... It's, not even, it's the phosphates and the sugar that uh, that code the DNA and also support the little ladders, the structures that, that bind those hydrogen, that, that support the binding of the hydrogen bonds of the acids that are your, you know, your gattaca, your guanine, your adenine, your thymine, your um, cytosine, all of those are the acids that actually code your DNA. That is you. And so when you bring in sugar in your body, because your sugar drops from a viral transducer, then the activity is like cooking up that sugar. And then there's a sulfur smell. And people think like, oh, it's cooking bodies. You know, that's why they're saying like, oh, hell is very smelly or volcanoes bring off uh, sulfur smells because there's a lot of methane chemical reactions that go on. Same thing in the earth, all that activity in the earth, same thing in your gut methane and there's dna methylation and you know and there's like what carbon atoms like what, there's like a difference between one or two carbon atoms because dna uh, or methane is like ch4 and dna methylation where they're using to destroy a cell like destroy tumors those are the therapeutics that's dna methylation ch3 so there's only one carbon atom or one atom <coughs> in between um dna methylation where it doesn't totally kill the the tumor, but it like slows it down. And then methane, the gas methane. So there's a lot of uh, chemistry into coming into play when it comes to your DNA regeneration and upgrades. And viruses are the catalyst and viruses are the foundation of it all. And so then I'm like, oh gosh, so the sulfur smell, and then I'm looking at, you know, Dante's Inferno. Not that I really made that connection right away. Then I'm like, oh yeah, this is, you know, the sulfur smell and uh, seven circle, the set, or what is it? The seven pits of hell. But then I'm like, oh wait, no, it's the seven circles. No, it's the nine circles of hell. So I remember certain things from way back when I was trying to read Dante's Inferno, or you know, the Divine Comedy, and things from um, like Homer and the you know the Edis the Odyssey and the the um, oh, what is it? Uh, yeah, the, the two books, Homer and the Odyssey. And there's a lot of connection with the Greek mythology. And then we know the Catholic Church and Greek mythology are the same thing. And there's like the seven deadly sins, the nine circles of hell. Oh, God, they're conjoined together. Holy crap. Now there's a picture being drawn here. There's connections being made here. Uh, this virus and how it impacts our bodies and what's going on right now is like then like revelations in the Bible, I guess. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a religious person at all. I was raised Jewish, and then I even kind of went away with went from that because I'm like I don't really understand what religion is really. I mean, I don't get praying to something that you know I just that this that is intangible. But then, um, but then reading about the Catholic Church and the Trinity 
and understand the Trinity and why the Catholic Church is heavily into physics, heavily into the sciences, because they understand the macro and the micro. Okay, the Catholic Church understands a lot. And who started the Catholic Church really? I mean, we can see we can look at like the, the, the Wikipedia or all the different, you know, people's takes on the history of mankind and the history of Jesus Christ and all that. Okay, fine, take what you want from it. But there's been a lot like, well, there's been a lot of, uh, I don't know, I would say a lot of oh, it's psychological operations, yeah, but it's even deeper than that. I mean, Socrates and Plato and all the different Greek philosophers understood how to control humans. They brought logic into this world. They got it from the gods, okay? The gods came from another time in another place. And they bestowed this knowledge of logic and reasoning, intellect, math, and sciences onto the people who were bioengineered to be able to take in this information and process it and then also evolve from it. And this is where mankind has gone through many civilizations of evolution because they're taking the things that they were taught and applying it and then doing like the scientific method. You know, you have a hypothesis, you do the experiments, these are the outcomes. And you can utilize the outcome that you weren't expecting because there's unintended consequences that could be like, oh, wow, that's aha. You know, I was tending to do this. Like I was intending to deal with my PMDD with the JJ mentality and realize that not only was my PMDD disappearing as far as just all the the crazy mental crap that goes along with it, but things were, were changing. I was losing weight. I was doing things. I was reversing things that I thought I would never reverse when I was first on the JJ juice way back in 2016. So that's the same thing. And those were unintended consequences that I was losing weight, which is a good thing because I was pretty bloated way back then. And I, I didn't know why I was and I was trying to lose weight to fit in and all this other stuff. So, but anyway, so yes, yeah, so the scientific method with uh, mankind taking on Plato and all the different Greek, you know, uh, philosophers, and then all the, 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 the experiments on humanity and on the world itself. And so then, then there's a Catholic church and Jesus Christ and all the apostles. And then you have the, all the spin-off religions from then on. And then you're like, okay, then you have the politics and obviously the religion and then the science is all connected with religion. And then you have all your different offshoots of belief systems that have the same intention, uh, different marketing and the same outcome. Okay. And so the diversity in our society is based upon all the, the pseudo choices that you have, but the intention is the same and the outcome is the same. And so when I, when I'm talking about immortality and all that, people are like thinking I'm crazy and all the religious people are like after me and all that stuff. And everyone doesn't want to believe that salt actually is life. And it's also has a curative effect. And these are all people that are like, dropping scripture, not everybody. There's some Jehovah's Witnesses that understand the, Im the immortality, there's others that don't. And so it's all really individual. But um, but when you think about the, the seven deadly sins and the nine circles of hell, death actually is a sin because death, which is the opposite of immortality, death is as a result of the seven deadly sins and as a result of a consequence of the nine circles of hell. Now, what is all that? The nine circles of hell. Well, I tried to read Dante's Inferno. I couldn't get through all the footnotes and whatever. It was so wordy and it was just like, ah. But thank God for the internet and thank God for cliff notes. And then thank God that I made that connection with the sulfur and the sulfur smell from the viruses and then the heat because viruses bring off heat. Your body goes through heat when it goes through upgrades. People try to take the vaccines and other things and antibiotics to lessen the heat, which lessens their lifespan. And that's why you see the aging process. So if someone claims to be a devout Catholic or any kind of religious pro-life, and they are aging and degrading with cancer disease and chronic illness and think that people should die, that actually is sinful. Death is a sin. So let's look at what the nine circles of hell is, are, whatever. So, so here we go. This is what I wrote. The COVID is exposing everyone's sins from low sodium diets and endless pursuits of pleasure, avoiding pain of evolution, constantly perpetuating starvation diets to an all-out denial saying, live your life. Don't let the COVID control you. Ha <laughs> ha, okay. Not everyone is self-destructive. Have fun, I'll watch you from the safety from my home. Okay? So I told you, the devil take his due. If you think the virus is a joke and thinking your passport is your ticket to more endless pleasure and pursuits. All right? 
So the nine circles of hell. Here are the circles of hell in order of entrance and severity. Limbo. This is where people are. People, what limbo is, is a cured state of decline. So when you're taking your vectors, and you're taking your pills, your powders, your supplements, and your detoxes, and all of your different you know, ways to stop the pain, all your methodologies, you're in limbo between life and death. Eventually, death is the outcome because that's what you're doing. Is you're basically destroying yourself at the micro level, destroying yourself at the micro level with your antibiotics and taking out organs and believing everyone should die and allowing grandma and grandpa to die and being okay with that and celebrating their death at their funeral. So Limbo, what they said was who or where those who never knew Christ exist or life, because Christ is life, according when you when you bring it all together. Dante encounters Ovid, Homer, Socrates, Aristotle, Julius Caesar, and more here. Okay? And so then we have lust. So that so the first circle is limbo in a cure state of decline. And then lust. Well, that's obvious, okay? Lusting after anyone or anything. And we all know what that is. We don't need to go into detail, but a lot of people lust after other people. They look only at the looks or only what they can gain from that person. And it's lustful and it's ugh. it makes you feel yucky. People who feel lusted after feel yucky from that. So that definitely is a sin, of course. Gluttony. Well, that's obvious. But where, the, where those who overindulge exist. Dante encounters ordinary people here. Not characters from epic poems or gods from mythology. The author of Boccaccio took one of these characters of Chiaco and incorporated him into the 14th century collection of tales called the Decameron. But overindulgence is, yeah, when you're uh, just eating to excess, partying to excess, drinking to excess, smoking, um, drugs to excess. Um, everything is to excess. Over, like when you're buying kids all the freaking toys in the world, they're being overly indulged. That's gluttony. Okay? I mean, there is a balance, and most people don't know it, so they overindulge. Now, the thing with me and food, my husband's like, I can't believe you spend so much on food. <sighs> people are like, whoa, are you being gluttonous? Not necessarily. What it is is that I'm dealing with a highly viral environment that my sugar drops things drop I have to feed viruses and so I have to have plenty of food on hand to keep feeding the viruses but if there wasn't such a if it wasn't such a dynamic environment I wouldn't have as much food as I have around I didn't have hardly have as much food before the COVID the COVID only happened in 2020 I've been doing the JJ mentality since like 2016 I didn't have to eat as much food as I do nowadays but when I feel these viruses come through I have to eat and so in a lot of ways that is kind of like a gluttony in their in their eyes because uh, when you look at a virus on a body that is um, that is malnourished, you almost have to act like gluttonous because you're trying to now keep the balance. But it doesn't mean really you're gluttonous. There are people who are, who are already balanced that just want more, but then you're not really balanced. See, that's the thing. Is that's what's what's the crazy thing is is when you're balanced, you're not gluttonous. But when you're unbalanced, you have to be because you're trying to feed something that you don't even know doesn't even exist or exist, but you can't tell where the energy is coming from. But at least with gluttony, with the JJ mentality, when you have to eat to feed the viruses, you know why you're doing it. It's not because you're overindulging. It's because you're trying to fucking stay alive. Okay? So greed. Dante encounters more ordinary people, but also the guardian of the circles. Okay? And Pluto, the mythological king of the underworld. This circle is reserved for people who hoard or squander their money. And I know a lot of people who hoard money those are the those are the major savers that are like the billionaires that have all this money in the bank and uh they they aren't really bettering society or society would be better you know you think about how much money that you know jeff bezos and tesla and buffett and all these different dynasties they have so much money and yet our society is not better well what does that mean can their money make everyone better well, I would think that if they allowed all the information about evolution to come out and they said, you know, once you're evolved, you're not going to want to procreate. OK, and so right now, the reason why people are procreating is because they're so imbalanced that the only thing left to do is procreate. And so you have a million kids on unbalanced bodies who think that this is what life is. And then you have like TV shows or Netflix videos that say, oh, yeah, humans only purpose is to live procreate and die and i'm like oh god that's the brainwashing okay and so if if buffett and tesla and bezos 
understood the human immune system, then uh, they could incorporate a whole different way of <laughs> keeping humans alive and not having so much unbalance in our society where humans are eating and consuming without giving back. And that's the thing is, I guess, what we're up against right now is the end of a lot of the experiments that are out there. And when, you, when you're at the end of your experiment and you realize, okay, now we don't need as many uh, people to, to pick and choose those that are innovators. Now we need to let all of the ones that are really not producing, that don't give back to society and are on their way out the door, we need to accelerate their lifespan and accelerate their aging process. And so this is what the virus is doing. It's accelerating people's aging process. Because there's a lot of greedy people out there that are thieves, that are criminals, that are that do things that, you know that, that don't share the wealth or the health or the the intellect or the knowledge. People like to hoard knowledge. I know a lot of people do that. Oh, you gotta pay for this knowledge. I give all my crap out for free, but I hate doing it over and over again. So that's why I had a book out. But now I'm up I'm upgrading the book to a better book and that's not come out till next year but yeah I mean I've given all my informa information out for free to for everyone for the taking and then people still want me to give more information and I'm like okay well I'm in the process so anyways <clears throat> so greed is is about people who are just you know looking to get rich without really earning it like seriously without earning it or take or earn it off the backs of somebody else and that's the medical holistic industry in of itself. That's the greed. That's what's going down the lot, going down the hill is the medical holistic industry. Anger. So Dante and Virgil are threatened by the Furies when they try to enter the walls of Dis or Satan. This is a further progression in Dante's evaluation of nature of sin. And then also, he also begins to question himself in his own life, realizing his actions and nature could lead, in, lead him to this permanent torture. Yeah, there are a lot of angry people out there. My parents were angry. My mother was angry a lot. Uh, there are a lot of people angry on Facebook. Okay? I mean, it's anger is such a easy trigger because people have latent viruses that have never been released and PTSD that was never washed away. And so it's been in a cured state, never dealt with or released. And so then when someone says something that they don't like or whatever it is, they become very angry and it comes out in alcohol too. Alcohol triggers the anger in people. That's why alcohol can be very, very destructive because there are some angry drunks out there that are destructive and that will destroy. And so anger is one of the major, major, major uh, circles of the nine circles of hell. <laughs> okay, heresy. Well, this is a religious base. But when you think about it, heresy, the, the root cause of heresy is the fact that Christ equals life. I'm not Christian. I'm, I was raised Jewish. So just so you know, that's my background is I'm not any kind of religious person per se. But I understand the correlation between uh, the icons out there that people you know, revere. Okay, so the Christians and the Catholics and all those offshoots, they look at Christ equals life. Okay, so heresy is rejection of life and the norms. Dante encounters Farinata Degli Uberti, a military leader and aristocrat who tried to win the Italian throne and was convicted posthumously of heresy in 1283. So Dante also met Epicurus, Pope Anastasius, and Emperor Frederick, whatever. So when you think about it, when someone depicts a certain way to be equals life, whether it's really life or not, it doesn't even matter. People have a perception of what life is because they don't know anything but, okay? We now have... Um, redefined what life is. It's not just a cured state of being in limbo because that is one of the, the, the nine uh, circles of hell is being in limbo. And that's exactly what goes on in our society right now. Everyone's in limbo in a cure. They, they, they're born, they're in limbo, and then they die. And then they also use the medical holistic system to stop the pain so they can still have their endless pursuits and pleasure and then be in a decline. Okay, so heresy is the rejection of life, really, of what actual life is. So when someone rejects life, then, or whatever someone's depiction of life is, then this is where people get punished for it. Doesn't mean they're being punished for the right thing for what actual scientific life, but they're being punished for something 
that uh, this is their version of what life is. And if you go against their version of life, then this is why people, there was a lot of um, the excommunication and, and all that stuff. Infidels, heretics, whatever. Violence is the, I'm not even keeping track of the, of the number, but violence is another ninth circle of hell. One of the nine circles of hell. This is, yeah, when people use violence instead of words to convey or send a message. And so this is the first circle to be further segmented into sub-circles of rings or rings. There are three of them, the outer, the middle, and the inner rings, housing different types of violent criminals. The first are those who are violent against people and property, such as Attila the Hun. Centaurs guard this outer ring and shoot its inhabitants with arrows. The middle ring consists of those who commit violence against themselves, suicide. Yeah, that's a sin. Suicide's a sin. That's why it makes your life insurance policies null and void. These sinners are perpetually eaten by harpies. The inner ring is made up of the blasphemers or those who are violent against God and nature. So those that just purposely destroy. And so, yeah, we're kind of like now we're in a lot of circles of hell right now in our society. I can totally now understand why where the religious folk are like, we're in hell. We're like, we're in the revelations, the last days and all that stuff. Oh, I get it. You can survive hell though. But I mean, I can understand why people then say that we are in some kind of hell because yeah, we're doing a major transformation, more a major terraforming. Okay. With the fires, the geoengineering, all the different um, climates change stuff. Okay. You, you know, people don't believe that our weather can be geoengineered, but it is on some level. Okay, it's it's all physics and, and laws of motion. And so we're kind of in this hellish type of atmosphere. But this is where you can survive it. This is not something that, you know, you can die, you should die from it. But people who don't understand how to how to listen to indicators and understand the power of salt and light, well, they will end up being like in Satan's kingdom, cold and lack of substance and dead. And you see it in your friends and family. Okay, so violence. Um and then the inner ring is made up of blasphemers, of those who are violent against God and nature. One of these sinners is Brunetto Latini, a sodomite, who was Dante's own mentor. Dante speaks kindly to him. The usurers are also here, as are those who blaspheme not just against God, but also God, such as Capinius, who blasphemed against Zeus. Who blasphemed against Zeus. So you're seeing now the, the, the conjoinment of religion and mythology. Because, or Greek mythology. It's not mythology, it's Greek reality. Okay, all the Greek gods are really people who have, yes, divine intervention, divine in them because they have access to all of their different um, hormones. They weren't being suppressed. They weren't taking the therapeutics to suppress their intelligence. But that's what goes on. That's why we don't have a lot of, you know, uh, e egal equally smart people out there because so many people have suppressed their intelligence. They have uh, cut off intel with their diets. I can't eat the meat. I can't eat the milk. I can't eat this. I don't want to feel this viral evolution. So I'm going to take a therapeutic and program my body to attack my evolution. And so that's why you have people who don't understand new information because they purposely destroy themselves and allow the system to destroy themselves. Okay. Fraud. The circle is distinguished from its predecessors by being made up of those who consciously and willingly commit fraud. Within the eight circles, another called the male bulge, evil pockets, which house ten separate bulges, ditches, ditches. In this, in these exist types of those who commit fraud, panderers, seducers, flatterers. Oh, why people flatter me all the freaking time that want to get something from me? Okay, the people who are actually legit, like you know, like uh, what is it? They're authentic. They're sincere in you know in in their um their compliments. But there are people who flatter me like, oh, I love you, Jillian. No, you fucking don't. Shut up. Don't be a liar. Um, simoniacs, those who sell ecclesiastical preferment, sorcerers, astrologers, false prophets, barriters, corrupt politicians, <laughs> hypocrites, thieves. Oh, we have a lot of hypocrisy in the religious world. You have all these people that drop scripture and believe death is okay. Death is a sin. And they work for the medical industry. All these Catholic, you know, hospitals, and they're promoting all the death protocols out there. And so, yeah, we have a lot of hypocrites in our freaking society, like a lot, a lot. It's insane. So, yeah, we have a lot of we have a lot of Catholics and Christians who are major, major hypocrites. 
major. Thieves, false counselors, advisors, sch schismatics, those who separate religion to form new ones, and alchemists, counterfeiters, perjurers, impersonators. Each bulgia is guarded by different demons, and the inhabitants suffer different punishments, such as the simoniacs who stand, who stand headfirst in stone bowels and endure flames upon their feet. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, this is the nine circles of hell here, okay? <laughs> wow. And then treachery, the deepest circle of hell where Satan resides. As with the last two circles, this is one of the further divided into four rounds. The first is Cana, named after the biblical Cain who murdered his brother. This round is for traitors to family. Huh? The second, Antonora, from the Antonor of Troy who betrayed the Greeks, is reserved for political national traitors. The third is Ptolemia, for Ptolemy, son of Abu, I'm totally like murdering their names, but you know, whatever. Son of Abubas, who was known for inviting Simon Maccabeus and his sons to dinner and then murdering them. This round is for hosts who betray their guests. They are punished more harshly because of their beliefs that having guests means entering into a voluntary relationship and betraying a relationship willingly entered into more despicable than betraying a relationship born into. See, that's yes. When someone comes into a relationship with, with an intention, with an agenda to destroy. Oh, oh yeah be careful who you're inviting your home that's the thing when you invite a vampire into your home you give them the power to destroy and many people I, in my in my world not right now but even in the past I've invited into my life and they've tried to destroy me and undermine me it took me a while to figure it out but then I realized oh wait yes so treachery happened can be happened very close to you if you're not aware okay so the fourth round is is Judaica. After Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Christ, this round is reserved for traitors to their Lord, benefactors, masters. As in the previous circle, the subdivisions each have their own demons and punishments. So interesting. I love this shit, man. Oh my God. Center of hell. This is where I understand how the planets aligned with the sun. The sun is the virus. Sun is a virus and it sends off gamma rays, which is intelligence. That's why Lucifer is light. Okay. The sun is intelligent. It is one huge virus. It is life. And then all the life forms come from the sun. So the center of hell, after making their way through all nine circles of hell, Dante and Virgil reach the center of hell. Here they meet Satan, who is described as a three-headed beast. Each mouth is busy eating a specific person. The left mouth is eating Brutus. The right is eating Cassius. And the center is eating Judas Iscariot. Brutus and Cassius betrayed and caused the murder of Julius Caesar, while Judas is the same to Christ. These are the same, these are the ultimate sinners. In Dante's opinions, as they consciously committed acts of treachery against their lords who are appointed by God. Now, I looked up, you know, the, the ninth circle, and then I'm like, oh, hold on a second. Here's even more so. Um, hold on. Uh, okay, well, anyways. Oh, no, I'll just find this one. Hold on. I will have to do a copy and paste on this one. That's okay. Hold on. Give me one second. Oh, Jesus. That's right. There's a ninth circle and there's a fourth circle. So, um... Oh, Jesus. I have just too much information. All right, well, that's okay. The ninth circle is is when you're when it's cold, okay? Um, and I got to find this. Oh, watch. I can't find this. That's okay. I don't know why I can't find that one. Oh, that's so annoying. Low sodium, da, da, da. Just remember, Kath. Okay. Yeah, all right, whatever. Well, they were saying that, yes, it's very cold in the ninth circle of hell because um, it is, it's cold in the ninth circle because it is furthest from the sun. And so why it is that when you're in uh, a room with a, with a ghost and a person is basically dead or they're hanging out with a dead person or a ghost, it's very cold because they're in Satan's kingdom, right? And it means that you you don't have any life to you. There's, it's very cold, like being in Pluto and Neptune. 
Okay, so the closer you are to the sun, the more life you have. So that's why the nine circles of hell is that they're not like dead, dead, but they're going down, down that, down that, 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 that decline. So when you're at the top and you're in limbo, that's being a cured state. So the nine circles of hell, the nine circles of hell is what happens when you are in a cured state on the decline. And that makes sense. You start turning to fraud and and violence and heresy and anger and greed and lust. And you see it in all these old rich men, old rich men, right? They're lustful, they're gluttonous, they're greedy, angry, heretic. And then all of a sudden, then when, then when you're dead, you're cold because you're not alive. You're sodium deficient. You're nutritionally deficient. Um, you're dead. And so hell is cold. I'm going to say that's a cold day in hell. Hell literally isn't hot. Really, what the heat is is life. And can you handle the heat? But it can be held to someone who doesn't understand that they have to go through the fire to get to the finally the peace. See, hot and cold aren't like hell. It's, it's the heat is life. But if uh, you don't manage that heat correctly, then you start supernovaing. You start um, turning into a red giant. And the red giant finally like turns into a black hole. And that black hole is Satan's kingdom. Again, I'm not religious. I am not religious. But I see the correlation between Greek mythology, uh, the Bible, and uh, the Catholic Church. When you go to the when you go to the Vatican, those are all the Greek gods. The Vatican knows like so much more than they're willing to say. But how do you tell seven billion people who are who are in the middle of the nine circles of hell how to stay alive when all their their only claim to fame or their only purpose is to get rid of the pain so they can go and pursue their pleasures. That's the whole thing why everyone wants to live right now because they want to pursue their pleasures. They want to cultivate their mind. They don't want to you know, evolve their kids or themselves. It's all about pursuing endless, endless, endless pleasure and mitigating pain. And then you wonder why you end up dead. You end up in the ninth circle of hell hanging out with Satan. Because you have committed anger, fraud, heresy, gluttony, lust. I mean, what else? Limbo, that's the beginning. That's the cured state. Limbo is the cured state. That is the equilibrium. Salt can put you in a cured state of decline. See, salt is a catalyst to evolution. Okay? But doing too much salt will then put you in a cured state and then you end up in that decline. Which I also see with some of my jelly juicers who stay on the J juice who haven't gotten off of it. So they are in the anger. They're all in the politics. Oh, there's a lot of heretics out there that claim to be all virtuous. <laughs> and so when you're aging and degrading, degrading, you yeah, you're you're hiding between, behind all your words and all of your actions that you have committed some of these and are actively committing. The seven deadly sins and the nine circles of hell. You are actively in the nine circles of hell. And that's where then you can just say like, you know what? I'm going to sit back and watch everyone just do their thing. And I'm I'm staying away from most people out there. I am staying away from most people. Because most people out there are committing some form of this. And then you know when someone's in a cure state of decline. It is. They're going to be exemplifying something of this and then eventually if you allow someone to get that close who is on the cure who's in a decline they will try to pull you down with them and so that's why you be, be very careful who you let into your house be very careful who you're friends with be very careful of your circles because i'm telling you some of your circles are destroying you and you don't even know it and you don't probably don't even care because remember it's about greed money greed social capital you know status and and whatever and so again i am not a virtue i'm not trying to be a virtuous person i'm not trying to be like oh i'm not a sinner and all that crap no i just want to live i want to live in peace i want to cultivate my brain and learn stuff and improve myself and keep my dog alive, keep my husband alive so he can you know have all of his dreams and whatever and that's all it is for me but there are a lot of you out there that are out there going to church and and doing all your things and claiming all this and that and you are on your way to satan's kingdom and and and, and you're okay with it you don't care as long as you get your millions of dollars if you think that's what it is i don't know i'm just like 
Oh my God. So I finally now have that portion of the book. So I have a chapter called the Trinity, the Trinity of, and then I'm going to be mentioning, yes, the Greek mythology, the Catholic church, yes, the Freemasons, because those are all very relevant. And also mention, you know, the nine circles of hell, seven deadly sins and the planets, because that's, you know, Neptune and Pluto have been depicted as hell because it's very cold and it's that far away from the sun. Okay. And so, um, I wish I could find with that because there was an actual description, but that's okay. I really, oh, here, I'll just go over here where, but, but yeah, there was a description of why Satan, why Satan, um, is very, why it's very cold in hell. Like literally when it's, when something is very cold in hell, it's because you finally reach Satan. And that's why all the horror stories the horror movies show like the when you can see your breath because that they reach Satan. Um, okay. A death is a sin. So I'm not impressed by pious people. La 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 la. The ivermectin. I don't know where that happened. What happened to that? Did I delete that? No. All right, whatever. I don't know how that disappeared, but that's okay. Anyways, I'm going to go, but I'm just going to let you know that, yes, the, the JJ mentality is about bringing heat to your body and feeling, yes, yeah, smelling the sulfur because, yes, you are cooking sugar in your body, okay, because you, you are going through thermal activity as you are upgrading, but you try to be, you know, you try to lessen the heat when your body has to go through heat. Yeah, you're going to end up in Satan's kingdom, completely cold and devoid of light. You get too close to the sun, you burn up. You get too far away from the sun, you'll you'll be hanging out with Satan in hell. So there's, there's things in between. You don't want to be in limbo, and you don't want to be in a cure state of decline. Okay? You want to be constantly evolving. And that means reversing the aging process, reversing all your issues, reversing everything that you thought was wrong with you and where you're just even. You don't have the Sanpaku eyes like these kids that are that are serial killers. I learned an, a name for those eyes that are very evil. And Google Sanpaku eyes, but those are the eyes of serial killers that have no ounce of humanity in them, no ounce of life, no empathy and who are just destroyers. And there are people who are destroyers out there and you look in their eyes and you can see the destruction, their intention to destroy. And that also has to do with, you know, with people who not, you don't always see that, but when someone, you know, meddles into your marriage or meddles into your relationships and trying to talk smack about you or anyone else, more destroyers out there. Okay. There's one thing to put your boundaries down and say, I'm, I'm done with all of this BS. You take care of your shit. I'll take care of my shit. And everyone's happy. Another thing to try to then weaponize anyone against anyone because you don't like what someone has to say. Okay? That's where people need to draw the line. Do not let anyone try to uh, destroy you and weaponize you or, or your significant other against each other. Because people will do that shit when they're unhappy. And so anyway, so yeah, be careful, you know, out there in the world and understand that why I'm doing this JJ product protocol type of stuff, JJ mentality, because we're trying to intervene. So these, so these kids who are unbalanced don't turn into psychopathic, sociopathic adults. They, then you have to watch out for. Okay. And that's the whole point of the JJ mentality is that we're trying to change humanity at the micro level. You can't always get them out as, as a child. It might be easier if you do. Adults can change if they choose to. Not many adults will because they're so they're so regimented in their ways. But uh, some adults do have the ability to evolve. But it's easier for you if an adult evolves and they get their kids to evolve. We won't have as much criminal activity and all the crap in our society that we have to give a reason to do a JJ mentality. So um, did I? Oh, is that all? All right. I just want to make sure I was I didn't leave anything out. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's that's it.
for now. Um, okay. I don't know what happened to that. That's fine. I'll probably find it later. Um, so center if I got that fraud and lust and yeah, just remember Catholics, devouts or otherwise death, old age or from disease is a sin. If you claim to understand the seven deadly sins and the nine circles of hell, realize if your pastor has not made you aware, death is also a sin. Okay. It is the outcome of your lifestyle exhibiting the seven deadly sins and the nine circles of hell. So I'm not impressed by pseudo pious people claiming to be saint like dropping scripture. If you are aging, you are sinning. Sorry, calling it like it is. Um, and yeah, if your intention is weaponize people against each other. So, all right. Good luck to you guys. You're going to need it. We're really in a major, major reset. And we are we are experiencing the nine circles of hell. But you don't have to end up in Satan's kingdom. Just ride the wave and stay out of everyone's business. Like seriously, stay out of everyone's business. Mind your own business. Keep your circle so small that maybe only, if you're a couple, maybe one person one person that you can entertain because i'll tell you what bring more people into your circle the more bullshit you're gonna have to deal with but that's my world i can do that and everybody can do that but uh the less drama you have in your world the more peace you have you're not be pulled into other people's bullshit and then you can be the influence not them try to influence you that's what it comes down to if you are a pro-life person literally at the micro level and the macro level physics wise you need to be the powerful force because if you are pro-life and you're a very small force and there's people out there who are pro-death, they will try to squelch your life. And so you get away from those, the masses that are all into self-destruct mode. And so if your army is small, as far as pro-life, you get away from the pro-death people. You get away from people who are aging, degrading, who aren't reversing the aging process, who are dropping scripture but not, you know, exemplifying actual life. Who are not teaching their friends and family how to actually, like, uh, face their evolution, face the pain, reversing the aging process. When you're hiding behind pretty words and all these different things, but you don't actually give people the real tools to reverse their situation and to actually face their life, then yes, you are part of the nine circles of hell, making hell making death as something beautiful. And I see it all over Facebook. Everyone want to make, wants to make death beautiful. Well, sorry, you are committing sin when it comes to the nine circles of hell, if you are Catholic. Even if you're not Catholic, it's still something that goes against life. If you're not for life, then you're for death. So you better figure it out. Which side do you stand on, life or death? Some of you are in limbo, and that's the first circle of the nine circles of hell. You don't know how to pick because you still want to cater to your audience. And people who want to have that social capital will not evolve their audience because the social capital of giving them what they're looking for versus giving them what they actually need, which is life and tools for life, is really not your, pur your purview. Your purview is to collect social capital. It's the greed. It's the gluttony. It's all of that. So if you're not giving your people an understanding about salt and reversing the aging process, and uh, you can overcome these viruses without killing yourself and killing you and all that stuff. If you're not doing that, then you're making death beautiful. <laughs> and that right there is a sin. All right, bye.